the Earth. Is it really just a big ball floating in space? Spinning on its axis at 1,000 miles per hour? Hurtling around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour? Whizzing through the Milky Way at a milk curdling speed of over half a million miles per hour? And warp driving through the heaven at over half a billion miles per hour? And what about the sun? Is it really 93 million miles away and close to a million miles in diameter with a circumference of nearly 3 million miles? And it's constantly illuminating half of our entire Earth's surface with the rotation of the Earth creating our 24-hour days, our night and days? Or, shh, the Earth is flat. And maybe it's completely still, just like we experience. And maybe the sun isn't big but it's very small and very close and not illuminating the Earth from 93 million miles, but is illuminating locally. And maybe everything, the sun, moon, and stars are not far away, but are circling overhead relatively close. In this video, we're gonna explore the latter option, and at the end, we're going to reveal startling evidence through the use of time-lapse photography that the sun cannot possibly be 93 million miles away, but is in fact very close and is illuminating locally as it traverses our flat Earth. Oh man, and watch how this sun comes at you. Boom! I mean, come on. And that's all perspective. If you look at jet trails, Google images, you'll see them. They start out low at the horizon, they come up overhead. Look at that thing. They come up overhead and then they go down to the horizon. Perfectly explains what the sun would do. Here it is going overhead. I love time lapse. And look at this. You can't go out and look at the sun. You can't see this stuff, except that it's on, you know, time lapse like this. It's incredible. Now watch this thing. It's sweeping. You know, the sun over flat Earth is doing a big circle, right? Look at this thing. See, it's sweeping to the right. It's like a lefty bowler. Just toss that down the alley, and there it goes, hooking into the pocket. <laughs> Shut it there. That's exactly how the sun would do on flat Earth. Okay, back to the Copernican principle, and this is what they tell us. The sun is 93 million miles away. Now, I'm going to show you evidence through sunsets that shows the sun light following the sun over the horizon, and it shrinks as it goes over. Now, there's no way it would do that if the sun is 93 million miles away. Okay, first I'm going to show you some footage from the ISS. Okay, now watch this animation. Watch this sunset. Now this is exactly, if they came to me and said, do an animation, this is how I would do it. If the sun were 93 million miles away. Just like that. Have the whole horizon fade evenly. But that's not what we see. Okay, wow, look at that. Look how the light lifts off the ground like a big wedge or like lifting up a sheet of paper. That's incredible footage. Definitely the light's following the sun, right? Okay, next I'm going to show you um, how uh, a sun that is circling over the earth that creates the horizontal aspect of the sun. If you combine that with perspective, which creates the up and down of the sun, the rising and the setting, you get the 23.5 degree tilt that they talk about. It's nothing but perspective and a circling sun.
fingers and other suns sweeping out a big circle. Here's a phenomenon that you might be wondering, how in the heck do you explain this on a flat earth? Well, this footage is taken from Alaska during the summer, and um, the sun does look like it's going up and down. The reason it's doing that is that this town in Alaska is not in the center of the sun's circular circuit. In other words, the sun is making a big circle, and the town is not in the center of that circle. So the sun will be closer and further from the viewer with the camera. That will cause it to go higher and lower, and also maybe even bigger and smaller. Look at the, the high altitude airplane. Remember, this is from a high altitude balloon. So that airplane is probably at cruising altitude. Notice how it looks like it's going up from the horizon. That's exactly how the sun will rise because that plane is staying parallel to the ground. And now watch, it'll go down to the other horizon. All right, again, perspective. That's how the sun will set. And forget the big ball. That's just a, due to a GoPro camera. But see how the sun, that's the point of this. And then also... Look at the size of the sun, man. Look at that thing. I mean, there is something to it to say that we're the higher we're higher up our view and the sun looks bigger and it looks like it's not as high in the sky as it does when we're on the ground. Something to that. Let's explore this notion a bit further that the sun looks bigger when filmed from higher up. The next three slides I'm going to do a comparison, a side by side. The one on the left, the camera's above the clouds. The camera on the right is ground level. And the point for the side by side comparison from the ground level and the level above the clouds is that above the clouds we're only maybe a mile or so up and if the sun appears to be closer to the camera well, that means it's probably much closer because if the sun were 93 million miles away, a mile closer wouldn't make any difference at all to its visual appearance.
Okay, here's a little uh, illustrator or a little cartoon from a website called timeanddate.com. It's really funny that they would have a perfect illustration of a sun rising and setting on a flat earth due to perspective. You'll notice that it rises from below the horizon and sets below the horizon. Now you might be saying, well, how is that possible? I can see now you're saying that it rises and lowers due to perspective, but how does it disappear below the horizon? Well, I got a theory about that. Because of the fact that all parallel lines and planes converge at your eye level horizon, this is according to the perspective. I'm not making this up. If in fact, and they do, they converge at your eye level horizon visually, then it makes sense that after that point, they diverge, meaning they then separate. So the sun would continue on a downward track. As you can see from my illustration here, the lines would go to your horizon, and then afterwards, they would spread out and separate, kind of like a starburst, and the starburst being at your horizon, at your focal point. Without further ado, we're going to start talking about, and I'm going to start showing you the time lapse of the sunsets that I'm talking about that clearly show the sun is close and illuminating locally. Here we go. All right, and here are a couple of uh, time lapse sunsets. And just like the sun rises at the beginning of this video, where you could see the sun coming at you, not maintaining any 93 million mile distance, here you can also see the sun moving away, and it's uh, clearly not due to the rotation of the Earth and a sun that's maintaining 93 million miles away, but the sun is moving over the Earth and moving away from you. Okay, these next three slides, uh, the sun is almost set already behind the horizon, but watch as the sunlight shrinks and follows the sun. It's definitely a locally illuminating sun, not far away, not very big, and definitely not 93 million miles away. Okay, remember this video from the beginning of the video? I showed you this one and how it's circling over the earth and watch it sweep to the right like a bowler bowling it in there for a strike. 
Okay, now I want you to pay attention to the way the light follows the sun. The sunlight's going to shrink, right, as it follows the, the locally illuminating sun. Now watch this. See it shrinking, following the sun? You do not get that if the sun is 93 million miles away. The entire horizon should fade evenly, just like this supposed shot taken from space of the Earth. You can clearly see the way they depict it. They depict the demarcation between day and night, or light and dark, as a long straight line. And you can see the long straight line moving as one solid piece. That means that the sunset should all fade, the entire horizon should fade evenly. But that's not what we observe, as we will see and as we've seen in the footage so far. The sunlight shrinks and follows the sun over the horizon. So. These time-lapse sunsets are definitely the nail in the coffin for heliocentrism. But this particular one here, shot from above the clouds from this observatory, is the final nail in the coffin. Look at how the sun just shrinks and the light shrinks to nothing. That cannot happen, as I showed you in the uh, when the sun illuminates the entire Earth, which it does from 93 million miles away, it has to. Uh, you don't get this isolated uh, look at the sunlight trailing the sun. That's only possible with a small sun, close, not very high, illuminating locally. I mean, if this isn't proof to you, then you gotta take the blinders off. Okay, and finally I want to show you some examples of local illumination or a city in the background. This is from Grand Canyon National Park. You can see uh, Las Vegas is one of them. You can see the stars going down so you know that's not the sun. That's the glow of Las Vegas, it says. You can see that's local illumination. I'm just making an example showing you the, here's Tuba City and a little bit of Flagstaff. Now, and this one here, you see two lights. Obviously, we don't have two suns, but these are two cities lit up, and it's just to show it looks just like the sun going over the horizon. That's the point of me showing that. Um, that's local illumination at work. The sun is not 93 million miles away, because if it was, the entire horizon would fade evenly, and the entire horizon would fade at the same time. Not what we see here, which is the small sun cruising over the earth and the light is following it. Case closed.